So today, what we are going to do is uh, have a simulation to, for, for the exam, for the Britain exam. Uh, and the session will last in this way. So first of all, I will give you a brief, some information about how the exam will unfold in practice. Uh, most of you already have experience with remote exam at Polytechnico, so it should be nothing really uh, new for, for most of you. Uh, then I will give you the, the text of the written exam, a simulation of the written exam, as we, we are going to do the, during the real written exam. And then I will give you something like half an hour, uh, 45 minutes, something in the middle, uh, to try to solve the exam on your own, so that you can think about possible answer using whatever material in this case to answer those questions. After that part, and for that part, I will stop the recording. After that part, we will, I will show you some solutions, some possible solution uh, to the exercise, to the question of the exam. Uh, and um, uh, if you have any question, any doubts, any validation of your answer, if they are different from the one that I will show you, uh, you can obviously ask either in the chat or with the microphone and then we will I will answer and we can highlight the difference if any. Uh, so is this clear up to now? Nothing rocket science but just to be sure that you are still here. Yes. Um, okay. So how the exam will work? Uh, you will connect at the time in which the exam is expected to start. Uh, on Zoom or in the virtual classroom, it depends, and we will tell you uh, before, obviously. Um, and as first step, we will see if everybody's there, we will check uh, that you are the one that expected to be with the, the prenotation, the, the booking that you had done on the teaching portal. And so I'd say, okay, is there, Alessandro number one and say yes I am here and and so on uh, so all, all this stuff uh, bureaucratic stuff and for the exam you will have to have the camera and the microphone turned on for the entire duration of the exam so you log in and you turn on the camera you turn on the microphone and the camera should uh, should show should show us um the your setting so at least uh, a portion of you and uh, the piece of paper and the pen that you are going to use for uh, solving the the answer or answering the question that we are going to provide uh, during the exam you can use obviously paper obviously a pen uh, or a pencil also if you prefer if you need to draw and a calculator because some question may ask you for more complex calculation that you can do at, uh, in your mind, like for the chi-square test that we have seen yesterday. Um, so after this phase, you all have the microphone, the camera on, and you are, who are you expected to be? We will give you a link on the chat with the text in PDF of the exam, as I'm going to do in a moment. Uh, after that, we provide you with this link, you have something like 10 minutes. So we, we don't start the exam yet. But after that moment, you have 10 minutes to uh, either print that, uh, that text, that PDF, or put it in a way that you can read it. Um, and you can also leave the room to print this. And so we, we give you like 10 minutes to save the PDF, open the PDF on your computer, save it, uh, print it, go collect the piece of paper that were printed and come back to your, your desk. When everybody is there and ready, we will start with the exam. At that point, you have uh, time to answer the question. Uh, every exam, as you may have seen, has four questions uh, for a total of 13 points. So every question is three points, except one that is four. Typically the first one, the one with the exercise is four points. The other are three points each. After the, after the time is ended, uh, you will stop writing on your piece of paper and 
you stay connected with the camera on and the microphone on, you pick your phone and you uh, upload, you make a photo, create a PDF for, from the piece of paper and you upload these to the Portale della Didattica in the section that is called Elaborati. Um, and you can do this with the Polytechnic app that has this function in it. So the Polytechnic app will allow you to, to make a photos of your paper, or your, or your exam, of your answer, multi-page, generate a PDF for you and upload it on the teaching portal. Uh, and then you still stay there connected in the room. You don't leave after doing this operation because we are going to check one per one that you uh, that the, the PDF that you uploaded is readable, is correct, it has the right number of pages and so on. So after checking, let's make an example. I will pick the, the one, the first one that is in the list of participants. Uh, so let's say that uh, Alessandro, the first of the two Alessandro that we have here, uh, upload everything. I will check that uh, everything is readable in the document and that it's four pages. And I will ask Alessandro, is this four pages? Alessandro say yes. And I will tell him that it's readable and that he can go. At that moment, Alessandro can leave uh, the exam because the exam is over and uh, the, the delivery of his exam is successfully and we can provide, we can continue with the grading. Uh, if it's not readable or if there is a page missing or something like that, I will ask Alessandro in this case to redo the uploading, just to, to be sure that you have the exam, that the, the version that is online, that, that is on the Portal de Adiatica is the one that you actually worked on without any missing part, without any uh, things that is unclear due to the, some shadows or uh, problem with the camera. So this is the, the last part of the exam is a little bit long because if you are, I don't know, 50, the, the last one will have to wait until we check other 49 uh, exam on the teaching portal. This will be something like 10 seconds per, per person, but if you are quite a lot, it will require some minutes. Uh, after that point, you all are disconnected from the, the exam and we will continue with, uh, we will start after some days maybe with the grading and we will publish the results uh, uh, on, on the teaching portal and you can see the results. You can ask to see uh, your, uh, your 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 exam your test graded and if you have any question we can also answer some question mm -hmm. uh, we didn't do and we probably repeat the same thing we didn't do a general session for seeing all the uh, written exam that you have done but you can ask individually mm -hmm. um, you can ask individually for seeing the your exam and we will send you a pdf uh, graded PDF for your exam, and we can uh, also have a dedicated chat, chat, video chat with with you or also with other people. It depends how many of you are enrolled in in the exam, and how many of you can uh, would like to see uh, the the exam, the written exam. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I have a question. So I'm, I'm in the chat, so I'm going to answer that. But is, is everything clear up to now? So we can start with simulation after this question. So the question is, so we have to position the camera so that it, it can be both the paper and part of us. It doesn't matter if our face isn't in the shot. So it should be, it's better, it's recommended by the university that your face is in the shot. So the, the Polytechnic recommend that you have a camera, something like one meter, one meter and a half uh, in front of you so that your face, your hand, your piece of paper is uh, recorded. Uh, so try your best to do this. Uh, with a, an external camera with, I don't know what. If this is really not possible, uh, since you know now um, and for, for the future, we can obviously also accept if it's just a, a great part of you and the paper and what you are uh, seeing uh, included in the, in the framing of the camera. But try your best to be all included uh, in, in the camera. So with, with a camera that is one meter from you, at least should, should be enough for representing all of you. Uh, yes, we can try now, but after. So I will, I will, st I will stop the recording. I don't want that uh, everybody of you will, will be on, on YouTube. 
Um, so I will give you the, the, the text before uh, so that, uh, and I'm doing it now, then I will stop the recording. You can try uh, to turn on cameras if you want, and uh, et cetera, in these 30 minutes that I'm going to, to give you. So I'm going to copy the link. This is, for, for now, this is a link in our website that is the final link in which you will have the text uh, published uh, online. Just for this time will be on our website. Uh, for, for the other exam will not be in the same location, obviously. And so this is the link. I can also show you, um, I can also show you briefly just to have a comment with you all uh, before stopping the recording and having you turn on the camera and try whatever you want. So let me share just the screen for a moment. Okay, so this is the simulation of the exam. I can zoom it a bit. So you see, uh, close box exam, no notes, no other material, just a piece of paper for in which you write, just uh, the pen or the pencil and a calculator is allowed or no, uh, not, uh, anything else, you should, should have anything else uh, around you. You have one hour from when we say, okay, now you can start because everybody is ready to start the exam. So after those 10 minutes for printing and similar thing, and uh, uh, you should try to, to read, to write clearly and reasonably short. So don't write the 11 pages for answering a question, it's not needed. Just to be clear and on point, answer what you are asking to. And this is uh, an example of the, of, the, of the exam. So typically the first exercise is, is an exercise, something that you have to do or something that you have to reason. It could be the chi-square test, it could be something like this, it could be a comments applying heuristics to a user interface, it could be a redesign of a user interface, it could be designing something according to brief description, it could be something like that. And you have some example on the website. So in this case, it's considered following fragment, a web page containing a lecture schedule of computer science here at Polytechnic in this case. Discuss good and bad points about the visual design of this snapshot. The second is a more, the other question are typically more theoretical, uh, like in the usability testing, describe the importance of clearly defining the task or tasks that participants need to accomplish. Third, we want to design a control experiment to redesign the compose new message action in a new chat application for mobile devices. The designer would like user to be more efficient in the usage of the app and avoid involuntary activation of the function. There are several, uh, they are evaluating several positions, sizes, and color for the activation textual button or icon. So either textual button or icon. In the above scenario, this one, identify the independent variables and the dependent variables for the experiment. So an answer to this should start with the independence variable R. And the dependent variables R without saying, oh yes, we are going to do this. And then they are creating a button. They are creating answer what is in a clear way, uh, but complete what it is uh, asked you to do. Identify the independent variable dependent, just to report which are the dependent and the independent variable in this case. And the fourth is during the finding phase, Discuss why open and the question are preferable, what benefit they brings, what the mistake they avoid. And again, an answer here is open and the question, open ended the question are preferable to other kind of question because this, this, and that, they bring these benefits and they avoid this mistake. No need to explain what is an open ended question or when they're used or something like that. All of that are words that you are in time that you're wasting and is not answering the question. Okay, so now we can, uh, I will stop sharing this. Uh, I will stop the recording now and you can, if you want to try, turn on the, uh, the camera uh, and try to see if everything is, uh, is in order. Uh, and uh, you will have then, let's say, half an hour to do the, the exam. If you have any question, you can write in the chat. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the solutions. Um, 
Microsoft Word. And here we are. Let me open the chat just somewhere. So if you have any question. So th this is the same document that you will, you will have. Uh, obviously, only the part online, only the part with the solutions. The other one is already there. So let's start from the first one. Let me just also give you some comments on that. And if you have any question uh, or clarification or comparison be between what you, you've wrote and what is in the solution, just again, write in the chat or turn on the microphone and it's not a problem. Uh, consider the following fragment containing a lecture schedule. So just this. Uh, discuss good and bad points about the visual design of this snapshot. He was asking about the visual design. He was not asking about heuristics. He's not asking about interaction or documentation errors, just the visual design. So structure, typo typography, all, all, all these things there related to the visual design. So a possible answer, notice that these are always possible answer. So this is more or less what we are expecting you to write. Uh, if you have, uh, I don't know, instead of writing positive and negative, you write a more complex sentence, uh, but with this information in it, it's fine. If you, instead of these two positive, you find other positive, there are actually positive and are re reasonable, that can be contains these, it's also fine. So the, all of these are possible solution because in most cases there is not a single unique perfect solution to this. So this possible solution is this, a positive, a good system. Obviously the good system is easy. It's a positive thing because it's easy to look at content and also for, for other reason, but at least because it's easy to look at content. And then there is a clear containment of lecture information to boxes so that every lecture, you see it's clearly here started from here and here and, and it's well defined uh, because there is also this color, the change. And these are the two positive. Then obviously this is, uh, these are a lot of negatives and here are reported in three. So there is an inconsistent error spacing. And this is the, the negative things that emerge from here. Here you have, you, you see uh, 839 and 30 are this big and then 10, to 11 are just smaller. Why they are smaller? Who knows? Um, and also here, these are smaller. Why there is this need to make this smaller and the other bigger and who knows? And why some of these are bold? Uh, okay, this is probably another negative point. So in constant of spacing, this is a negative. Why this is negative? Because it's lead to a messy page, to difficulty starting of identifying start and times and inconsistency between lecture duration and size of information box. Because if you reduce space, you're also reducing the length of these. So it's not clear if this is three hour, one hour and a half, and you cannot compare the, how big is this with how big is this. Because you, you don't have, so these are three hour, and this also three hour, but this is bigger than this. So visually, it's, it's an issue. Uh, Inconsistent over formatting. Why are some of, some of them bold? The same. Why 8.30, 9.30, every third minutes are, are bold and the other no. Which is the meaning, you know, the semantic meaning of this. It's not even the start hour. It just, who knows? This, this is a problem visually. Highlighting information that is not clear why you are going to light it down. Um, Low recognition of the elements inside the information box. Yeah, everything is the same font, same color, same style for the different information item. Let me go back there. Mostly, but you have, say, Informatica is bold. So the title of the course is bold. Then you have the, the aula, the, the room is underlined, and then everything else is more or less the same. And Corner Fulvio and Kane Kiao are the same things, no, one is the teacher. The, the other one is the distinction in surname. No? All the people whose surname start for, with Kane and start from Kiano are in this room. Uh, and the hours are there. And so this could be represented better. And the question doesn't ask you for um, 
re-adding this or rewriting re this, just highlighting this. Um, uh, uh, two questions. Uh, can we consider positive also the use of consistency or a text for the close button that make is? Yes. So the, the, this close button is it, it could be it could be done. Uh, it could be a, a positive thing that the fact that it is different from from the other. It's really minor, obviously, uh, because the screenshot, the snapshot is way bigger and clearly the focus is, is here. But this is yes, it could be a minor positive thing. And Enrico, please go ahead. Um, the lady, the QD button doesn't seem like a button. There's no frame, no border, no yeah. shadow. It's just a label. It's a negative point for me. Yeah, I think that with this design, yeah, in this case, could be uh, debatable thing because yeah, this is not a button, uh, but it could be a link. Another thing. Uh, um, um, but yeah, they... at, at least it could be a button or could be, oh, maybe it's just a link. Um, so it's it's just text well. Uh, can I add uh, yeah. something else? Uh, Saturday uh, seemed to me is like a free lecture day. So why waste space? It's a, it's an uh, so mm -hmm. actually, don't do an assumption based on your knowledge, okay. uh, because obviously this is um, something that you have some knowledge about it. Uh, but uh, so typically Saturday is, um, uh, so this is not not re really related to visual design. It's more about semantic meaning of the, the presence of, of that column here. But actually, Saturday uh, we can have some courses. Uh, and um, at least, uh, for, for instance, now in the, in the remote set, in the remote setting that we are, they are asking our availability to teach on Saturday. They are trying hard to put all the lecture from Monday to Friday, and this is really appreciated by probably everyone, students and teachers, but uh, so some courses could be on Saturday. When I was a student on Saturday, there was some uh, English courses, for instance, on Saturday morning. Uh, so, so some courses in the in the Polytech, in the Polytechnic uh, could be done on Saturday. For, for Sunday, it's, 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 it would be really strange. To have because Sunday is clearly a polytechnical. It's already it's closed. Sunday, polytechnical. So you, you cannot go in the polytechnical. The, the okay. door is closed when we we are all open. So it makes less sense to have a Sunday, but Saturday could be could be reasonable. Okay, and the difference it, and the, there is no visual distinction between lecture and the exercitation exerc hour. Yeah, thank you. This uh, okay. go in. Uh, it's yeah. It, it's I think that is uh, a specification of this low recognition element inside the information box. Now, same style for different information items. It, it could be, yeah. I, I agree. It could be another thing that can, can go into negatives, and it's related to this at least related. Anything else, uh, Rico? No, no, thank you. Thank you okay. so much. Uh, so let me read the comments. And then the negative can be that it makes difficult to recognize different lecture vertically. Add the consent. Uh, what? Not to read, not to really. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Not convinced about this. Uh, the, the distinction, the problem, if you want about this is uh, the difficulty of identifying certain times, inconsistency, blah, blah. All of these could be related to uh, difficult to recognize different lecture vertically at the adjacent. Um, yeah, same color from same lecture, we already said that. Uh, it could be, again, related to the third point, but yes, data sources with the link. What do you mean? A repetition of the start and date inside the lecture box. So for the uh, Marco, for the first one, I agree with you. So same column, same lecture, we already discussed about it. The second one, I'm not sure why it's a problem. I mean, you can, I mean, who cares? It's, it's why it's, it's negative or positive.
And also for the third, uh, it's negative or positive to you, the repetition of the start hour? Ah, uh, for you are all positive. Uh, so, okay. Um, so the same color for the same lecture, uh, for the same class, you mean? So can that the computer science have the same color? Or for the type, okay. Uh, yeah, in this case, uh, you know, we, we, we again, don't make assumption. Uh, it could be positive. In this case, we just have computer science as lectures. So we don't know what happens when we have another class. So if you are going to write the same color from the same lectures as positive, uh, specify that if this is this apply, we don't know because it's not in the, in the picture, but just specify that we don't know because they are not in the picture. But if this repeated, that computer science is, is yellow and another course is green, then this is for sure a positive thing. Uh, but we don't know because we just have computer science in this case. Uh, maybe uh, uh, all, all the lectures are, are yellow. So it, this becomes quickly negative as a thing. Uh, the data source with the link uh, is not a, a positive thing for the visual design. Nothing to do with visual design, the data source with the link. It's a positive thing that it's there, but it's not a good point for the visual design. Um, it's text. Uh, the repetition of starter and dates inside the lecture box could be positive instead, I agree, because it's give you a redundant information and help the reading, reading the, the, um, uh, the, the table. So you see here we have in this possible answer something more general, if you want, uh, with respect to something that you, you have said, um, but uh, you can also, you know, go here and say, okay, blah, blah, blah. So here, for instance, we can say, okay, not in the negative, but uh, I don't remember. Uh, color, let's imagine that is negative. Uh, the type of the lecture are of the same color, for instance. So if you want, you can also go a little bit deeper on some examples specifically as you, you have done. But if we're asking you about, so the question is asking you about visual design. So just focus that and don't make assumption uh, or either don't make assumption about things that are not there. Or if you want to make assumption, write that you are making this assumption like about the colors. So question number two. So this is typically the first one or the exercise one is the, the one that uh, is four point. So slightly bigger than the other as, as a grading. Uh, in usability testing, describe the importance of clearly defining the task or tasks that the participants need to accomplish. And the answer, you see, it's just one row, the one sentence now. In usability testing, oh, sorry, it's not. It's a little bit longer, but not so much. In usability testing, the user should be instructed to perform one or more task. And this task should be clearly defined. So the main element is clearly defined. Notice that we are speaking about usability testing more than uh, control experimenting, which we have also other properties. But usability testing task should be clearly defined in order to, this is the consequence, the consequence to explain why they should be clearly defined. They should be clearly defined to limit a study uh, to the portion of the application that is of interest, what we called the main functionality in our case, but in general, just a portion of the application of the user interface that is of interest. Maybe you don't want to, to do usability testing of all the entire application, just in a portion of that. A certain way the user are able to reach the goal of the task and in which way, so the criteria of success, uh, with errors and so on, and measure the chosen metric, which will be defined according to a specific task. As we said before, we said, for instance, you are not measuring time when you have a task that is uh, with think aloud, because you are typically, you know, because you, you have some fake measurement about time. So uh, in usability testing, describe the importance of clear defining the task. So this is say, okay, uh, Basically, the task, uh, you have to create the task. The user should be instructed to perform this task. So to explain what, what this task here. The task should be clearly defined. And this is three items that is important why it's important to clearly define the task. 
Any comment on that? Okay, I will move on. Yeah, Matteo, uh, can this answer be summarized by so that the test results are homogeneous? This is uh, extremely uh, short as an answer and open to interpretation uh, because you can also have homogeneous um, test results, not only with uh, clearly defined test the task, you can also have uh, not clearly defined task and have homogeneous probably some some the test results homogeneous uh, more or less uh, so so yeah probably the, the idea is 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 correct but try to be more a little bit more specific than so that test test results are homogeneous because homogeneous could mean a lot of things and could be also not uh, the most important things about um, about usability testing. So stay in the context also, but yeah, it could be a starting. The main motivation is because test result homogeneous, that means blah, blah, blah. Uh, answer question three. Uh, we want to design a control experiment. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, Andrea, the question was slightly general. Describe the importance of clear defined the task, uh, not uh, uh, which are the step to create each task. Uh, probably for, for the question that you are mentioning, we will like, we will write something like list the main step for defining a task. But you know, the importance of the script is not really related to the importance of clearly defining the task because the script also has a lot of things that are nothing to do with the task, like the questionnaire. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, read the, the, the question. The, all the, the words in the question are typically important, not just some, no? Okay. Um, so question number three. We want to design a control experiment. So now control experiment, non-usability testing. To redesign the compose new message action in a new chat application for mobile devices. Designer would like the user to be more efficient in the usage of the app and avoid involuntary activation of the function. They are evaluating, and this is the motivation why they want to redesign this. They are evaluating several position, several sizes, several colors, for the activation text of button or icon. So designers are evaluating several positions, several sizes, several color for either. And also they are evaluating all of these for a button with a label, a normal button, or for an icon instead of a button. In the above scenario, all of these, identify the independent variables and the dependent variables for the experiment, for this experiment how to design a better, in a way, compose message uh, between text of button and icon, I would say. So let's see the answer, the possible answer. So you see, quite schematic. Again, you can also write with less schematic uh, if you prefer, just full sentences. It's the same. The important thing is that the content is there. So here they are asking independent variables and dependent variables. So you have to answer about dependent variables and independent variables. No need to say, okay, the, a control experiment is this, and we define dependent variable from a hypothesis or the hypothesis this. It's not asked about those things. So independent variables. Here there are a list of possible independent variables: buttons versus icon, uh, the size of both, the color of both, uh, with some levels, you can exemplify some levels, uh, vertical position, top button, horizontal position, left, right, or you can also have instead of these two, just position and have four level, top, bottom, left, right. So you see why this is a possible answer because it's, it's not really needed that, but more or less is there. You should have considered the position, the color, the size, and the type of the element. So probably this could also be written like type of the element uh, button versus icon, 
size, blah, 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 color, some example, and so on. So different way to, to answer, but more or less the, the, the main information not there. Independent variable, anything that they are all the dependent variable of that description. Positions, sizes, color, and type of the button, of the, the element. Uh, dependent variable, time needed to activate the function and number of undesired application, like number of the back action immediately after selecting the action. Why this? Because these are uh, the right for to be more efficient in the usage of the app and avoiding involuntary activation of the function. Yes, dependable, dependent, dependent variable always have to be measurable. So number of slips, what does it mean? How do you measure the slips in a control experiment? So you can write number of slips, but give some hints. What do you mean for slips in general? So it's clicking outside the button is a slip, is a slip or, or not? Uh, so actually, if I have the button here, so you see what is here. If I have the button here and I click here, this is a slip or not? Probably not in the sense because it doesn't make uh, less efficient. But if instead of clicking here, I click this other button here, or is I don't want to click this, but I click this, uh, it could be. Um, okay, uh, Enrico, I have right to avoid involuntary activation and be more efficient in the usage of the app is wrong answer. Uh, it's in the text. So it's, it's not an answer. What do you mean? If I if I do wrong because I I wrote what uh, we we uh, what I found in the text. So be more efficient in the usage of the app and be yeah. Uh, but, but again, uh, uh, dependent variable should be something that you can also measure in some way. You know, uh, so the dependent variable. If you if you go back and see how we define dependent variable, we said that dependent variable was something like that. Uh, was something that you. Uh, measure upon the independent variable and variates according to the independent variables. And um, so, yes, obviously, uh, to avoid involuntary action and be more efficient are something good. But yeah, as Andrea is writing here, you have to be more concrete. Like, okay, what they mean for efficiency? What I'm going to measure uh, for the efficiency of uh, in the usage? I'm going to measure the execution time. I'm going to measure the time needed for activation the, the function. I'm going to measure what? So you can also report both. So to avoid involuntary activation, two point, uh, colon, uh, frequency of uh, undesired clicks, for instance. Okay, but- uh... Because, because that, those two things are just the one in the text. And dependent variable are obviously related to that, but you can avoid involuntary activation. You can measure the involuntary activation in many ways. And more efficient, what does it mean more efficient to you? Okay, so or I in, gain in no point in this case. Sorry? Uh, I gain no point in the in the final test if I brought- uh, I, I don't know if you gain no point uh, right now, honestly. Uh, okay. But in the, in the dependent variable, just report these, probably you get- um, So all of these is three point. So just to be clear, all of this is three point. I can guess, but this is just a guess that I'm doing at the moment that it should be, it could be uh, 1.5 points here and 1.5 points here. And we just identifying the element could be half point, a plus our compensation with the next question. So we, we have points actually. So let, let me also say this, we have points. So this is four points, this is three points, this is three points, and this is three point. But then maybe, uh, this is not perfect and, and and nobody does this perfectly. And so we decide to give three points to, to everybody because to, to everybody that doesn't de that does this correctly, but not maybe perfectly correctly because maybe everybody misinterpreted one thing. So we, we give to this three point to everybody that missed this thing, even if in our intention was not because probably it was something unclear. Uh, or uh, maybe here, we should give you three point 
2.75 points or something like that. This is ridiculous. So uh, we will probably give you three points here. And then if you have another small mistake here and there's another small mistake here, one of these got 2.5. So uh, we, we, we are not doing this test like a calculator, but we are also reading what you're writing and understand, trying to understand what you're writing. And if there is a common mistake that everybody's doing, probably is not something that you should be penalized too much for that, so uh, you have to consider all this. We, we are trying, let's say, using these points as an indication, we are going to give you these points, but don't pick. Uh, so we, we, for instance, we are not going to give you three points, two points, two points dot nine, two point dot eight, because it's it's a level of precision that we can, anybody can, can do about this thing. Uh, so you, you will see uh, three points, two dot five, two, uh, 1.5, and, and then maybe if it's a little bit better than one, so this is maybe uh, 3.5, but it was 3.5 to four, so almost four, but we give you 3.5, and this, this thing that we uh, remove from you here, maybe this is again 3.5 to four, so this becomes four, uh, or this becomes four and this 3.5, so because they are good as a question, not perfect, and since none of them are really nice to be four, one becomes four, the other becomes three or four, maybe the one that is more towards four becomes four. So also consider this, that we are not going to, to say, okay, this is 1.5 and this is 0 0.25, this is 0 0.25, because we will get mad in doing this and we will increase the errors in evaluation as much as possible in this way. Perfect, thank you so, so much. So yeah, in Thanks. your case, you will not get the full point, let's say, not, not the full, not three points probably, if you are just right this. Uh, answer number four, that is the last one, where is? Hmm? During the need finding phase. So we are not speaking about survey interviews in general, in the need finding phase, let's imagine all the, the needed tools in the instruments in the need finding phase, discuss why open-ended questions are preferable. Hmm? Uh, as somebody wrote in the chat before, not necessarily oral open-ended question or written, just open-ended question, are preferable to probably closed and the question or other kind of question, but in general, what and, and what you have to discuss why they are preferable. And in particular, after saying why, you should say what benefit they brings and what mistakes they avoid not what, she, what is an open-ended question. And so a possible answer, you see it's here. Why? Advantages avoid mistakes. Again, schematic, you can also be more prolix in writing, but uh, the content should be more or less this. So open-ended questions are good for qualitative analysis. Why? Oh, open-ended question, because they are good for qualitative analysis. Exploring user need and the habits and in particular for discovering knowledge that is unknown or unexpected for the interviewer. If you want, you can also add a closed question that would be better for quantitative analysis, just to make the term of, of, of comparison. Uh, this could be, you know, if I, this could be here or it could also be skipped, but it, it's, it's a nice thing to add if you want, uh, but it could be easily skipped or put in a parenthesis because it's complementary. And this is why. Then advantages, which are the advantages of open-ended question. Allow the user to express their needs freely, if you want also to say. Allow the interviewer or the person who's made question in any case to follow up and get more information. Uh, encourage the user to speak freely and provide more detail or to write freely and provide more details if they want. Uh, avoid the mistake, avoid the interviewer's bias that could suggest a preferred answer to user. Uh, and avoid missing important for the user aspects. Now, this is a possible answer, for instance. Any other comments on this?
Okay, so again, these are possible answers. So if you have something different or you want to specify if you are um, uh, considering uh, open-ended question because maybe they have uh, made by voice because maybe they have advantages that written open-ended question doesn't have uh, like these, especially for the follow-up uh, could be easier with oral uh, open-ended questions. So you can also, if you want to distinguish, okay, this is more for oral, this is more, this is not apply well for written, the other are general, uh, or you can skip these and because they are not applied in general and so allow the, the interviewer to get more information, um, et, et cetera. So all, all of these, I will create a PDF and I will publish the video also and put it, uh, well, the video on the teaching portal and on YouTube and the PDF on the, on the website so that you can uh, download it uh, at any time and see them. Uh, as, as a reminder, in the exam session section of the website, you already have some past exam, either the simulation of last year and actual uh, exams uh, that we did last year. Not all the exams of the last year, but uh, some of them are there with the solution. So, so basically they are there, the ones for which we prepared a solution, a written solution, and we were able let's say, to publish them. And we will plan to do uh, the same for this year so that students have a corpus, let's say, of samples of exam after two or three years of the course. Okay. Okay, so I think that this ends the course. It's also 1 p.m. So have a good time, a good week after. And have a look on Slack because maybe we have other communication about question about the exam. For sure, we will have a communication about the exams or in the future, like opening for um, the, 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 the lab assistant for next year. I already have, I still have the, the Slack channel for last year HCI course because it be it could be useful. And obviously, uh, until we have exam for this course or until February, uh, no, September, uh, we will use Slack for communicating with you. And if you have any question, as I said before, please feel free to ask on Slack anything, write to the course, comments, uh, the exam, your project, any dubs that you have, don't be shy, let's say, and ask things. And if we can answer via Slack, we will answer in text. If you can, if we cannot, because it might be more complex, or maybe you, you need to show something to us, uh, we can also set up a dedicated moment in on Zoom or on any platform and uh, have a conversation about your, your issue. Okay, that's it. We have done for this year, for this course. Uh, we will see you at the exam uh, when you, you are enrolling. So uh, have a good day and see you soon. Bye.